Online, welcome. We are so glad that we are together worshiping you. We are um, very excited to share something new with you this morning. You know, you've you've heard you've heard messages about how God wants to use your money, and you've heard messages on how God wants to use your time, and you've heard messages on how God wants to use your skills. But today, I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about how God wants to use your mouth. God wants to use your mouth for his kingdom and for his purposes. And I want to start with a a verse that says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Say that with me. Ready? Here we go. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So that verse says the tongue has power. Your tongue has power. How much power? Your tongue has the power of life or death. And what's so amazing about that scripture verse is What you say brings salvation. What you say brings damnation. What you say changes the course of history for yourself, and what you say changes the course of history for other people. And so the proverb says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. But but don't miss this. The tongue has power. Say that together. The tongue has power. Ready? The tongue has power. Your tongue has power. And what you say will either increase your future, your future will be bigger, your future will be brighter, or what you say, your future will be smaller and your future will be darker. The tongue has the power of life and death. Now, we also know that Jesus talks about the heart. And so in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So the mouth always speaks what the heart is full of. So I I love our graphic. Let's show a picture of our graphic. We got a megaphone and we've got a heart. And I wish I was this creative because that's exactly what this series is about. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? And that's a circular argument. And the answer is, uh uh-huh, right? We don't really know. What comes first? Did the chicken come first and create the egg? Or did the egg come first and create the chicken? Well, you could argue that what comes out of your heart is what you speak. But you can also argue that what what you say gets reinforced and it gets, gets pushed down into your heart. I had a friend of mine who's a lawyer and he was out in the lobby a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, and he was talking to me about how people marry their stories. I said, what do you mean? He said, people just keep telling their stories over and over and over again. And he said, pretty soon, they don't know if they're true or not, but they believe they're true. Because what you say gets reinforced so many times. And so what he says to us in the proverb is, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I want to talk about the tongue for just a minute. In fact, that's going to be our theme verse for the next several, several weeks. Do you believe that? H- have you said something you wish you hadn't have said? Raise your hand if you've said that. Raise both hands if you've done that already this morning since breakfast. (laughs) I mean, is there a day that goes by where we don't say something that we shouldn't have said or wish we hadn't said or we knew we should, and we want to pull it back in? It got out there, but we can't pull it back, right? And so how does this work in in a really good way? In a really good way, the tongue has the power of life. I was in the third grade. And I loved anything that had a ball to it, baseball, basketball, football, anything that rolled, anything that moved. I was there. I was your guy. I loved to play sports. And my third grade school, you know, who cares? School, you know, not, not so much. I'm, I'm a boy. I'm in the third grade. And it was probably this first or second month of that third grade season, year. And my third grade teacher's name was Mrs. World. And Mrs. World, in class one day, leaned over to me, over my shoulder, 25 kids in the classroom, and Mrs. World leaned over and she said, Kurt, you know, I'm what, nine? She said, Kurt, 
I watch you on the playground. I watch you play baseball. I watch you play kickball. And she said, you love it. And she said, you're good at it. And you're giving your best out there. She said, I, I'm not getting your best in here. <laughs> that was probably a very polite way of saying it. And she, with a smile and the tenderness and kindness, she said, I want your best in here. That was a wake-up call. And I gave her my best. On Father's Day, you heard Chris Sprouse and I do the sermon together. Actually, Chris did the message. I just asked him questions. But you heard us together that morning. And Chris told us a story about his father, Joe. And how during the course of one of their conversations, as Chris was developing and growing up, that his father, Joe, said to him, he said, Chris, you can do anything. I believe that you can do anything you want to do. And Chris said, even now, he said, I can remember the color of the carpet. I can remember what my dad was wearing. I can remember what I was wearing. I can remember the entire context. Why? Because words have power. Words have so much power. Yes, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, but the tongue has the power of life and death. Therefore, the graphic, I don't really know which comes first. And we talk about a lot of series about the mind, and we talk about a lot of series about the heart. This is going to be a series about your mouth. So another verse that might raise your blood pressure just a little bit is Matthew chapter 12, uh, verse 35. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on that day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. Ouch! That pains me. I have said a lot of things I should not have said. I have said a lot of things to a lot of people I should not have said or done. Haven't you? And then he says, for by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. So let's talk about this. Let's have a conversation about this. And I want you to think about, first of all, what you're speaking. I want you to think about what comes out of your mouth. But I also want you to think about what's going on in here. What are you saying to yourself? What are you speaking to yourself? What's the self-talk that takes place inside of you? So give me just a minute to get to my point, okay? You, you are speaking what you're hearing. You're speaking what you hear. What you've heard in your life that you've embraced, that you've received, that you've accepted, you're, you're now speaking that. And so whether it's true or not, you're speaking it. Whether it's right or not, you're speaking it. Your self-talk or the talk that you have in conversations, whether that's right or not, it's what you're saying. You're speaking what you believe, and you believe it because you've heard it, and you've heard it, and then you've accepted it, and, and you have received it. But how do you know if it's right? How do you know if what you're speaking is truth? How do you know if what you're saying is, is right? You believe it, and you're saying what's inside of you, so it it really matters what gets in here because what gets in here is going to come out right here. So it's really critical what you allow to come inside of you, right? But you're speaking what you believe, but are you believing what's right? Well, let's talk about that for just a minute because there's a little bit of truth in the educational system. There's a little bit of truth in the economic system. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of Washington. But there's a little bit of truth. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of the medical field. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of the investment field. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of the business field. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of CNN. There's a little bit of truth that comes out of Fox News. There's a little bit of truth that came out of your family. Your family spoke some truth. 
But none of those organizations or entities or families had the corner on truth. How do you know what they said to you was right? How do you know what you read or what you hear or what you receive is right? And all of a sudden, you begin believing something and you begin espousing something and communicating. How do you know if it's right? What your dad said to you, what your mother said to you, what your great-grandfather said to you, how do you know that that's right? And you're speaking and saying those kinds of things. The only thing that I know is true is this right here. I don't know if anything else is true other than the Word of God. I, I, can, I can say unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, that every word in this scripture is 100% true, even if I don't understand it, even if I, I'm not sure I, I have grasped it, even if I miscommunicate it, it's still true. This is true 100%, right? The Holy Spirit is always honest and accurate. Ask the Holy Spirit to lie. And he'll go, what's a lie? I have no idea what you're talking about. The Holy Spirit does not lie. God cannot lie. Jesus on the earth, all the days he was on this earth for three years, Jesus never once said anything that wasn't 100% true. And so in your lifetime and in my lifetime, wouldn't it make sense that what gets in here more than anything else, what influences my life for what comes out of my mouth would be the truth of God. Wouldn't it make sense to spend a whole lot of time to know what God says about you and what God says about me? Last Sunday in the foyer, a guy came up to me and he said, when is the Promises series over? And I said, you know, I don't know if he was like, it's, it's about time or if it's, you know, I, I, I didn't know how to read that and I didn't ask. I was afraid to ask. So I, I, I said, well, you know, it's funny you'd mention that because next week we're going to start a new message series called Speak Life. And as I keep thinking about this, I said, I, I don't really have any answers for you except the promises of God. So I said, probably the next 25 years, the, the series will probably go the next 25 years because I said, there's 7,487 promises. You've heard that before. And I said, I don't know what else to tell you than the truth of God's word. It's the promises. And so it would behoove you, look that word up if you want to sometime. It would behoove you to figure out what does God say about you, your life, economics, medicine, health, Family, future, what does God say? Now, I'm not saying ignore what's going on in this world. I think you should be very astute to what's going on. I just don't think you should count it as truth. I think you should pay close attention to what's going on economically and politically. I think you should pay close attention to what's going on medically. I just know that this is the only embodiment of truth. It's what's in the Word of God. So wouldn't it make sense to speak what God says about you, about your future, about your family, about your fitness, about your faith, about your finances? Wouldn't it make sense for you to get a notebook or your notes in your phone and start making lists of what God says, because that's the only thing I know is true. I don't know if Fox News is 100% true. I, well, I do know it isn't. And I do know that CNN isn't 100% true. I do know that. But there's no biases here. This is to help you. This is to make your future bigger and to make your future brighter. So it would make sense to put this inside of me and then it would make sense for me to speak this. Let me ask you this question. Are you negative? Don't, don't answer that, okay? That, that's a rhetorical question. Are you critical? Do you go to a coffee shop and start seeing how you can cut down and criticize and tell people how smart you are? Are, are, you, are you afraid? Are you worried? Everywhere I go, people say, I'm worried, I'm afraid. And I say to them, what are you worried about? What are you afraid of? I read the end of the book and we win. We win. Just read the book. We don't lose. We win. 
So it, it makes sense to me to figure out what does he say. Well, let's look at John 6, 63. He says, my words, my words are spirit. My words are life. You, you can't find that in your family. I hope you have a great family. I hope you're a great mom, a great dad. I hope you're a wonderful grandparent. I, I hope, but you can't find life and spirit in your family. Your family's like every other family. It's a Clint Eastwood movie. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? <laughs> God's words are life and health. Look at the next one. God's words are life and health. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. His words are life and health. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. They are life to those who find them. And health to one. You want to find health? Don't let my word out of your heart and don't let it out of your mouth. Look at the next verse. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. God forgives and God heals. God puts healing and forgiveness in the same verse. If you've got a medical malady, if I were you, I'd memorize Psalm 103, verse 3. This would be my go-to verse. He forgives all your sins and he heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and kindness, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Look at that. God even blesses your food and water. Do you know why you say blessing? Do you know why you say grace before a meal? comes out of Exodus. This is why you say the blessing every time you have a meal. You're asking God to bless your food and your water. And he promises to bless your food and your water. I always think it's funny because as a pastor, you get invited sometimes and you go to somebody's house and, and you know, they want you to bless the key lime pie. You know, I mean, what do you, how do you pray that prayer, you know? Lord, I know this is rough on the pancreas, but please, somehow, in Jesus' name, let this work. I mean, what do you do? How do you pray that prayer? You got to get real creative. After 40 years, I've gotten real creative with my dessert prayers, okay? He says, I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. You're struggling. You're struggling. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not. Look at what God says about you. God says, I, I don't have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. If you have a spirit of fear, this would be your go-to verse. I, I cannot tell you how many times I have prayed that prayer in the middle of the night. I wake up with something and it bothers me. I'm upset. I'm concerned. It's a risk. And as a leader, you're always taking risks. We call it faith in the Christian world, but it's really a risk in God. Lord, you didn't give me a spirit of fear. You gave me a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. You didn't give me a, as a mom, as a dad, as a worker, as a leader, as a community, as a teacher. God didn't give you this. He gave you power, love, and a sound mind. I am dead to sin and alive to righteousness. Temptations are real. No, 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 I'm dead to sin. No, 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 that's not going to get me. No, 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 I'm not going to succumb to that temptation. I am dead to sin and alive to righteousness. The reason I was created was to live in righteousness. Temptations are going to come, absolutely. But no, 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 I'm dead. I'm dead to sin. I'm going to live for righteousness. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. I'd have this one memorized. Everybody needs to know Isaiah 54, 17. There's always weapons formed against you. Evil weapons, evil people, there's always something out to get you. No, 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 no weapon formed against me will prosper. And I refute every tongue that accuses me. You ever been accused of something you didn't do? Yeah. <laughs> you want to think about it for a minute before you respond? <laughs> this is a verse I would hold on to. This is a verse I would catch. I would cling to this. Isaiah 54, 17. God plans to prosper me in all areas of my life, spiritually, financially, mentally, and socially. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. You want a bigger future, a brighter future? You want more? Why does God bless you? 
God doesn't bless you just for you. He blesses you for the expansion of his kingdom. That's why he says to Jesus in Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. God's government is going to increase more people, more Christians, more believers, more land, more territory. Why in the world? I ask so many people this. Why do you think God's blessed you? Not one person been able to tell me the right answer yet. You ask, why has why God blessed you so much? I, I don't know. He blessed you for the expansion of his kingdom. That's why he blessed you. He promises to prosper you. That's what Jeremiah 29, 11 is. He promises to give you a bigger and a brighter future if, if you hold on to that. I'm a believer and I'm not a doubter. All of us have challenges with our faith from time to time. I'm always a positive encouragement. I edify and I build up. I never tear down or destroy. Now think about that. Just leave that one up there for just a minute. What do you say? This is what people say all the time. Just listen. See if you say these things. I'll never get out of debt. I just can't lose weight. I'm always sick. I, I, I'm shy. I will never have that kind of salary. I'm just not qualified. I have a slow metabolism. I'm always tired. My body aches. That scares me to death. I wouldn't say that. That gives me a heart attack. It just might. <laughs> it's the worst time to raise kids you know what? God's never in a hurry and God's never late. God's always on time with his divine appointments. I cast all my cares on the Lord for he cares for me. It's not that you're not going to have worries and fears. You're going to. But you do something with them. Worst thing you can do with your worries and fears is talk about it in a negative way. Tell God, I'm trusting you. I never get tired or weary when I study God's word, pray, minister, or praise God. I'm alert. I'm full of energy. I'm a giver. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I love to give. I have plenty of money to give away. What are you saying? What's your self-talk? What are you saying to other people? So again, I just, I just want to have a family discussion. You see, you're a priest. And a priest pronounces blessings. And a priest prognosticates the future with future expansion. You're a priest. And as a priest, you're not down here in the muck and the mire. You're not down here in all this stuff going on because all this stuff changes. This changes this year. Now lumber prices were up. Now lumber prices are down. Fertilizer was up. Now fertilizer's down. We got the Democrats in office. Then we got the Republicans in office. Then we got the Democrats. All that stuff changes. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is what you speak. This is what you believe. This is what you put inside of you. This is what comes outside of you. So life and death is in the power of the tongue, and you're speaking one or the other every conversation that you have. But you are a priest of the Most High God, and you've been set apart and separated to be his son and to be his daughter. So what do you do with your life situations? You speak truth. You speak truth. You don't ignore them. You're not ignoring reality. You're not denying reality. You're just speaking truth. And your words have the ability to change the future. Your words have the ability to change states and nations. And your words have the ability to change your family for the next 500 years. Don't just think about you and your little short tenure. Think about the next 500 years, if God tarries, of your family. And so you speak. You speak. To your life situation. So we're, we're going to let you see a testimony right now from one of our staff members and, and Matt and Kylie just really struggled and had some real issues, but they, 
They spoke the word of God. And the word of God is the only thing that could get them through this. And I just want you to hear this and we'll come back. So two years ago in September 2020, uh, we found out we were pregnant for the first time. Super exciting. We immediately told everybody. It was awesome. And then when it came to December of 2020, we actually ended up losing the baby at 12 weeks. It was super traumatic. Um, I, was, I was so sad. But fast forward to March of 2021, found out we were pregnant again for the second time. And this time we got to do a gender reveal, reveal with our friends and family. It was super fun. We found out we were having a baby girl. It was really awesome. And then that year, 2021 in August, we ended up losing the baby at 23 weeks. Uh, after losing the second baby, you know, you start to question like, can I have kids? Is this something that's going to happen in our future? Like, do I even try again to lose two kids? To lose two babies in a row like that was very devastating. And if I'm being honest, I was angry. I was mad. I was sad. I didn't understand. One of my friends is like, hey, let's, let's read the Bible front and back. And I'm like, okay. So we started all the way at the beginning. And it was crazy because a verse that I've read, I don't even know how many times, came back to me. And it stuck out this time. And it was the promised covenant. Um, to Abraham's descendants from the Lord. It says, you will bear fruit and multiply as many as the stars in the sky and a piece of sand on a seashore. And I thought to myself, I was like, that's the promise to me. I am Abraham's descendant. That promise the Lord has given me, the highlight in this season is that I will have kids. In December of last year, we found out we were pregnant again. And right now we are expecting Charlie in early August. This is what she looks like. She's super cute. Every night I pray over her and I say, Lord, I appreciate the promised covenant you made with me that I will bear fruit and multiply as many as the stars in the sky in a piece of sand on a seashore. And I claim that over Charlie right now. And I actually claim that over all the kids we will have in the future. If you're not speaking life and you're not speaking God's word, either in your marriage or just in your life in general, it, it gives a foothold for the devil to, to come in and to, to speak false promises to you. After every appointment, I had to take a deep breath and remember that promise the Lord gave me that I will bear fruit and multiply as many as the stars in the sky and a piece of sand on the seashore. And Charlie is going to make it. So this is a story unfolding, and this little baby girl <clears throat> is supposed to come in about two or three weeks. So why don't we pray for that little baby girl right now? Would you pray with me? Would you join me at home and join me in the house? Father, we pray for this little baby girl named Charlie, that she will be healthy and strong. And we pray for Kylie, that her womb will be a great housing complex right now for this little baby girl. And you will bless Matt and Kylie and Charlie and that this girl will raise, be raised up to be a kingdom impactor. She will impact the kingdom of God in Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, we're gonna pray. This is gonna be exciting. But it's when they spoke the word of God to his promises that she actually could cope and could make it through the day. That, that's what, what they said is what I've been trying to say for 30 minutes. What's your life situation and what are the promises of God and how do you speak those promises of God over your life situation? So where are you this morning? Where are you today? Right now, where are you? Well, maybe you've got some family members that aren't Christians and it really troubles you. 
I, I would look up the verses and I would pray those, those evangelism verses over those people in your family. And I would pray and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a declaration. That's a promise. It's not just till you die. It's the next 500 years. Have a 500-year vision. Don't have a 50-year vision. Have a 500-year vision of your life and your family. So maybe that's your go-to verse, and you claim that verse, and you speak that verse, and you share that verse. Maybe for you, um, there's some financial challenges, and you're asking God to supply his resources. He promises he will. My God will supply all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. It's in the book of Philippians. Maybe that's your verse. Whatever, whatever you want a, a different job, a better job, you want to make better financial decisions, well, you, you find those verses and you pray them. They're, those are the problems. Don't get together and criticize and complain and put people down. That's speaking death. That's not going to help you. What's going to help you after 40 years of doing this is not me. It's right here. It's the Word of God. Jesus is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus will help you. You speak what Jesus said. You speak what the Word of God says over your life. Maybe you really are afraid. Maybe some kind of fear has gotten passed down into your family. Maybe you've just adopted fear and it's given you some false adrenaline. I, I would claim that verse, 2 Timothy 1, 7. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. Nope, nope, he didn't give me a spirit of fear. He gave me a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. I cannot tell you how many thousands of times I have quoted that verse. Thousands. Hundreds in the middle of the night when something frightens me. No, 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 that did not come from you. Nope, nope, I'm not gonna say that scares me. Nope, I'm not going there. I'm not ignoring it, but I'm not going there. You gave me a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And, and he made you to be more than a conqueror. You got a challenge right now in front of you with a neighbor, coworker, family member, spouse, kid, aging parent. You have a real challenge in your industry. God made you more than a conqueror. I would say that over and over and over and over again. With as many people who are watching us and in here and this morning, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if some of you had suicidal thoughts this week. I, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shame you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad about it. But I, I would not be surprised if some of you have not had some really dark moments and some dark thoughts. But God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And so may the love of God, John 3, 16, may the love of God just cascade over your wounded heart today and just fill you with his peace. And that's another one. He promises peace. My peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world do I give it to you. God promises to give you. So if you don't have peace, don't gripe and complain and criticize. Claim that, John 14, 27. Claim that, claim that first for your life. I, I think we mean well, but I think we get lazy. I think it's easier to come home and turn on television and watch news, which quite frankly is the same story every night, just different places, just different contexts, just different wars, just different companies, just different actresses and actors, just different athletes, just different politicians. It's the same story every night, isn't it? So I, 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 I think we just get lazy and we don't write down, put on our 
notebooks. What, what promises do I need? This is what I'm going to, I'm going to memorize the promises of God. Guys, I'm not saying ignore the world. I actually like politics. And I actually like economics and I study all that. I'm just not putting my faith in it. I'm putting my faith in the word of God. I'm putting my faith in what the scriptures say. I think you should be very astute, but I think you should be speaking life and nothing else is truth, but that comes out of here. Maybe, maybe you just feel really bad about some mistakes and some lifestyle things you've done and you just, you just feel shame. I, I, man, I'd go to Romans 5, 1. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. We talk about the blood, how the blood cleanses us, the blood covers us. What I do know about you is the blood has covered you if you've given your life to him. What I do know is he has plans to bless you and prosper you and give you hope in the future. What I do know is he has 7,487 promises. Those are in store for you. And they're in store for every single person in this room. They are. So let's pray. Let me pray for you at home. Let's pray for you here. This is your ministry moment. What will you do with this today? This week, will this change how you think? Will this change what you put inside of you? Will this change what you hear? Again, if, if, if you need medical, physical healing, guys, I put, put Psalm 103, verse 3 on my screen. Who heals all your diseases and forgives all your sins. What a promise that is. Every sin and every health issue, he promises. Woo, that's a promise. I would say that over and over and over and over again. Speak life. Speak life. Your future, but everybody else's future around you is dependent on it too. God, we come to you humbly this morning. And we thank you for the truth of your word. Your word is truth. Oh God, we come to you with these great, powerful verses. And we see throughout the course of history how you just blessed people in famines and you blessed people in droughts and you blessed people with war when the odds were so far against them because they are your people and they're speaking your word God we speak back to you your word you don't lie you never change you always have a remnant you always bless and prosper and help those that cry out to you day and night. Now fill us, God, with your truth. Fill us with all of your truth. And let us speak life. Because you are the embodiment of life. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you as well, if you've never signed up, you've never been baptized, or maybe you were baptized back, you know, when the earth crust was cooling, but there were a lot of mistakes that have been made between now and then, and this is time for a, a recharge. I, I just want to encourage you, go to the guest service desk, sign up. You can sign up on your app. And next Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. at Honeymoon, we're going to have a great service. All right. Also, Andrew Frazier mentioned to you that we're going to be having some five-minute prayers guiding you through. That's on your app as well. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you on basically Monday morning on the app. All right. Bless you. Bye-bye.